kids went to school here in Yelm, and um, uh, we raised the children here. We all went, always went to church at the Assembly of God Church in Yelm here, right across from where we used to live, and um, took the children to church all the time, and, uh, and served the Lord from here. Um, now, you said you moved in here when Anna and Connie came. I, when I first came here from England, yeah. Now, how many years were you here when Anna was here at the same time? Like, did you get to know her? Yes, I got to know her. Not know her, but we weren't here very long. Just probably, maybe, maybe around a year. Maybe not that. Did you ever talk to her about the Lord at all? She was a Christian. Yeah. Yeah, she used to walk. You, you know where, right, right across from Jay-Z Nights? They used to live down there. Yeah. And she'd walk to church every Sunday. Oh, wow. Somebody got church from near, near where Jay-Z Nights lived now. Wow. She and walked, walked there. He, the, 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 but he didn't go. The grandpa didn't go. Did she speak straight Norwegian, or could she speak English at all? She spoke some broken English, yeah. So you could... Um, I could understand her, yeah. So did you ever? did she ever say anything about the Lord that... Any lessons there that you learned from her since she was a generation above you? Well, she um, she did a lot of praying. Mm. So what, what you do? Well, I, I just pray half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the evening. Oh, you pray a lot. <laughs> when we walk in. I got a whole list of requests I, I take to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, and she, um, yeah, she was a spiritual leader in the house. And she used to pray, pray over Michael and Sharon because I had them, they, they were here when, when she was living, no, she she come she come to my house in town and pray for Michael and Sharon. The one by the Assembly God. By Assembly God Church, yeah. So yeah, that's why we say Anna resembles, or you resemble. Anna resembles you a lot because of the fact that we we make a lot of comparisons with you too. Yeah. Because you're so faithful. Um, yeah. And when, uh, no, I can't I can't quite remember now when that was because. Um, we moved. We, we moved in here after she passed away. We, 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 then, we, then we, then before she passed away, we moved in town. Yeah. And um, we were here for just a few months. When I came from England, and then we moved in town. Then after she passed away, um, we sold the house in town and moved in here. Okay. Um, so how how long were you in the in the house in town? Is it five years? About five years. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, going back a little ways, um, <clears throat> what did you enjoy, or what did you and your siblings like to do together? Well, um, every summer, Grandpa and, the, and me and the kids used to go to Mount Rainier one day, and he got time off from work for the summer vacation, and we go to Point Defiance in Tacoma, and uh, go to Lawrence Lake a lot. Yelm, where the kids, where he, where Grandpa taught the boys how to swim, and um, then we'd go to Eastern Washington and visit Heggy, because Heggy was a pastor back there, in, in Moses Lake. We'd go there and visit him once every year, and uh, we'd go to Puyallup Fair every year, and take the kids on rides, yeah. and um, we used to go to Yelm Carnival every year and take the kids on rides. And, um, and during the during the year, apart from vacation time, we didn't go any place at all. We just stayed home and just went to church. Um, what was your act? I remember, honey. You wrote in a book one time about how he bought you an ice cream cone. Oh, when when, when I was in England. When we were in England, um, all the stores were closed every Sunday in England. They didn't open the stores on Sunday. Mm. And um, uh, but, but somehow um, he came in from the um, camp, and I was going to meet him after meet him meet him someplace in town. And um, uh, he met me, and he had an ice cream cone in his hand, and it was Sunday, mm. and uh, one for me, and one for him. He must have picked it up someplace. Maybe these ice cream stands around, these mm -hmm. little cars that used to drive around ice cream. And uh, I said, no, I can't eat drink, eat that because it's, today is Sunday. And you're not supposed to buy things on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I said, you can, so he ate so both of them. He ate both of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So um, explain... How, what it was like when it happened in the whole, the whole scene at Christmas. At the well, um, 
that there was a man stationed at the, at the camp. His name was Paul. He was a chaplain there, a Christian boy. And um, Cam said one to, one to me one time, um, we were going together, well, he says, we're not getting serious anyhow, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on a furlough and visit another town. Because the pastor's wife here had some relation in England and wanted him to visit before, before, he, left the, before he left England. Mm. And um, he said, I'm going to go on a furlough, that's like a vacation, for about 10 days and visit this family that the pastor wanted me to visit. So I've asked Paul to take you out. And uh, so I thought, well, that's fine. So he's a nice boy anyhow. So he'd uh, come to church and take me home from church, and then we'd go for walks when, when he got his day off. And, um, did, you ever, did you ever hold hands with Paul? Yeah, hold hands with hands Paul. He was real nice and put his mm -hmm. arm around me. <laughs> and uh, there wasn't no kissing, I don't think. I'm not sure. I'm, I, there was, there was not, not, wasn't much going on between I'd us. I'd go to mistletoe. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we were just pally. And uh, he'd come to my mother's house and, uh, and uh, come and visit me there. And, and, um, and my sister had her boyfriend coming from another camp visiting too. That's the one that got killed. The one that got killed on D-Day, yeah. And um, then uh, it was Christmas Eve. And my mother had the servicemen that my, my sister knew and my, my Cam's friends from the camp that used to come visit once in a while. Mm. And uh, had a Christmas Eve um, party for us. And so Paul was there. And that night, Cam came home from his trip. Mm. So he came to my house. And so, uh, and... Um, under the, uh, in England, they have mistletoe. It's, um, it's a little plant. They hang on the door, door, mm -hmm. doorways, and everyone that goes under that doorway, if you want to go and kiss them, you can. Mm. When the mistletoe, you go under the mistletoe. You have to be at the same time, or just one? Well, one at a time. You put the, have the mistletoe over there. If you see the mistletoe, you can, you can grab a girl or grab a man and kiss them if you want to. That's, <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's, yeah. that's, that's part of the Christmas party. And so... Um, my sister was there and all these the, the servicemen and my, my family and um, uh, Paul and I stayed together all evening even when Cam came in he was by himself and Paul and I were getting along together Was Sydney and Blanche together already at this time? Yeah, they were there then okay. and um, every time I went under the doorway Paul would grab me and kiss me and then <laughs> just, just, just peck on the cheek you know? yeah. and um, so the whole evening I spent with Paul Cam just sat there, you know, we, we weren't giving him too much attention. And then um, uh, Paul had to go back to camp that night, and all the rest of them had to leave. And so um, your dad didn't, camp, uh, Grandpa didn't have to go back until the next morning. Mm. So he was going to speak at the, stay at the Red Cross that night in town. Yeah. And they catch the army truck next morning just to, to the camp. And um, they all left but him. So him and I were left there together mm. on Christmas Eve. And so he said... Um, said to me, told me about his trip, and then he said, um, I've been watching you and Paul all evening, and you're sure getting getting, getting uh, thick together, and uh, he, he's giving you a lot of attention, you're giving him a lot of attention, and uh, nothing real serious though, you know, just yeah. just playing around, and he said, uh, I, I sat there and I was, I was jealous all evening of you doing that, so he said, will you marry me? Wow. And so they had to, we had to wait 30 days in the military before you can get married. You've got, you've got to apply to get married. Mm -hmm. So he's going to apply the next day, he said. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll marry you. Because I, uh, I thought he was special. Mm -hmm. And um, but I thought he wasn't serious enough, you know, so I, so I, I kind of made out with Paul. Yeah. And then he went, um, he applied for a marriage license and uh, the camp to let him go. So we got married in February. It was about, I think, no, I think it was 60 days. We got married February. The, we got married February the twenty seventh. So it'd be about about, two, it'd be about sixty days, yeah, about, 60. about two months. Yeah. So, so, so this is December, and he, he applied. We got married in February twenty seventh, and um, Paul was at the wedding, and Don Dalen that um, came to the um, church with him that first mm. night, he was stationed in another place than England, and um, he came down by train, you know, to go, to be our best man, and. Um, mm. And he passed away years ago. But his son, Mark Dalen, is one of the missionaries that our church supports. Really? Him and his wife, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. John Dalen, write that down. Mark Dalen is one of the, one of the missionaries, his, his son. And um, the last time Don came to the church, I mean, I mean Mark came to the church on, on furlough and came to our church for service, I told him who I was. His dad was my best man. He was really interested in that. Wow. Know? 
so when he comes back again, I'll be able to talk to him again. Yeah. And so uh, that was how that started, and so we got married, and then yeah. and World War Two ended, and uh, he was shipped back home here. And that's when you came in the next year. Yeah, I came in the following year. What memory stands out most about your wedding day? We went in a taxi to the church. I had an 11-foot veil over my dress, and um, I stepped on my veil and pulled the veil off of my head, partly off my head. <laughs> Somebody had to help me get it back on again. <laughs> oh. Did you, were you embarrassed at that time a little bit? Yeah, well. Were you embarrassed at all? When oh, that yeah. <laughs> I had a picture. I had a picture of it somewhere, you know, but I don't know where it is. Uh, we will look for that then. But it was a nice wedding, and... And we went in town and had the pictures taken. Mm. The, the newspaper took the pictures at the, chur at the church where we were, we were married in a, in a Baptist church because the, we didn't have our own church. We just, we just had a store building. Did they have that wedding song when you came down the aisle? No, I don't. Is I don't that the style? The, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. They didn't have them. Okay. Um, so, how were you attracted to Grandpa? Like, what... What made you most attracted to that testimony? The testimony. What the Lord had brought him from, and how he was serving the Lord, and uh, what he used to say, how he used to stutter, and the Lord healed him of his stuttering, mm. and he wanted to serve the Lord, so he was a real spiritual man. And he told the Lord when he got saved that he was he was going to meet everybody that he met, he was going to witness to him about the Lord, and he did. That was then. Yeah, he, he um, witnessed to everybody. And he'd take me shopping and go and said, you're going to shop and I'm going to go and witness. Mm. And he'd talk to people and sit on the um, bench in the walls or in the doorways and pray with people. Yeah. And uh, everybody that came to the house he witnessed to. He made that vow to the Lord when, he, when, the, when his stuttering stopped. Wow. And then would you say that's what you most admire about Grandpa? Yeah, his witness. His, his Christian testimony? Yeah. Um, so... What do you believe is the key to a successful marriage? Give and take. Like, um, don't always have your way. Mm -hmm. If the other person wants to do something and you don't want to do it, um, somehow trying to go along with them. If it's a place that's, 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 uh, that's uh, you know, presentable. So Christian couples don't go to any bad places anyhow, you know. Yeah. So, um, but we... Um, we pretty well agreed on most things. Oh, yeah. We were living in the house in town right across from the church. And Michael went and slapped him. And Dad, Dad slapped, Grandpa slapped him. I didn't. And so, um, he took him in the bedroom and slapped him. And I told him he shouldn't be hitting him because he didn't go back to England. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. um, why did you choose your child's names, your children's names? Bible names. Biblical names? Yeah, Bible names in, in, them. in them. Or Bible, so or Bible, Bible words in them, yeah. Like okay. Michael, Michael Campbell, named after his grandpa. Yeah, his dad. Okay. And Vernon Mark, Mark's a Bible name. Desmond John, John's a Bible name. Hey, he said, yeah. one that comes the farthest to church, and you're the, one, the, one, the, you're the most faithful. Hmm. Pastor told me that. He said, you, you have the farthest to come, yet you're the most faithful. So I used to go to every service, and then I was just when I played that little pump pub organ on the street, I fell my feet with it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that was probably an experience that I didn't expect to hear, you know.